<laughs> okay, let's go. Cool. So today I'm going to talk about making better tech decisions, uh, facing that news feed. You know, when you come into work, you pick up your coffee, and you maybe go into Hacker News or something like that, and you look, and you've just adopted Angular 2 yesterday, and they came out with Angular 4. They skipped 3. They're like Valve. They, they don't even know what 3 is. They, and you kind of get overwhelmed, and you go, oh, man, this industry is moving just so quickly. But then you have to think for a little while. You have to go, like, well, moving where, right? We're, we're solving different problems. We have different solutions. We have lots of very good solutions for a fair different amount of problems. And these new solutions don't come in a chrono chronological order and you have different things going on. So, I mean, there's, if you're on Hacker News, there's like all these functional programming languages coming left, right and center and like, oh my goodness, look at all this new stuff. And Lisp came out in 1958. It's not that new. These things don't come in chronological order. I mean, think about it. Is that your data center? Is that really what you're dealing with, a four-story data center? Because that's what Google made MapReduce to work on. However, they also run a thing called Firebase, which you just store a JSON object. Because even Google knows that that's all you need sometimes. Um, Right, so another thing you need, to, you need to think about is that signal isn't noise. What that means is that just because there's a lot of talk around something doesn't necessarily mean it has any technological value. Um, that's a little bit harsh, but uh, we're going to take React.js as an example. I mean, if you, if you had to look at the news cycle, you'd think everyone's using React, man. Everyone from Netflix to its illegal torrent-based cousin is using it. We, we, have to, we have to adopt React. So I thought, well, this is a good example. Let's, let's look at some stats, right? So first off, it was difficult to find um, real stats because most of the time when you look for most used JavaScript framework, you get a top five style BuzzFeed list kind of thing, right? It's just horrendous. It's, it's not data-based, it's not anything, there's no value. But Stack Overflow has at least some data, and we see in the most loved tech, we do have React in, in a bunch of languages, which I'm not sure is very good for data analytics. I'm not a data scientist, but it seems wrong. But anyway, it's up there, right? People are talking about it. And that would explain the amount of blog posts and talks and things around React. But Rust is at the top. Anybody using Rust in production? <laughs> yeah. Um, so here we go, most popular. And then we see the only JS framework in here is Angular. We don't even see um, we don't even see React. Uh, that's that's full stack developers, by the way. In web developers, if you look at just web developers, uh, Angular is still twice as popular as React. So the most popular tool, or the most loved tool, the thing that people talk about everywhere, isn't necessarily the one that is the most popular or the most used. And that's something you have to think about. And lastly, you need to consider your team. And we're going to pick on a JS framework again because those are really notorious for just moving a little bit too swiftly. Um, re uh, JS frameworks, so two, two famous ones a, a while back were Angular and Ember. Now, there was an interesting thing behind both of those is they were actually designed for specific teams. So Angular was designed for people with experience in Java or C-sharp. And Ember was designed for people who use Ruby. So these match certain stacks. They're designed to match certain stacks. So if you've got a bunch of functional programmers 
you may go towards something like Elm or something like that. But if you're looking at resources that are used to something more traditional, you're probably going to pick something that's, that suits their style and doesn't completely break your stack. So my point is, when you're choosing a new technology, you have to remember that the best ideas don't come in chronological order. That the best tool for the job probably isn't the most hyped toy. <laughs> and you need to consider your team and, and think about where your resources come from and what they're used to and what they'll be best at picking up. Cool. And that's that. If you want to argue with me, you can do that on Twitter. <laughs> <laughs> cool.